Hello there and welcome to Spiritual How-Tos. I'm Debbie Cheney and I'm glad that you stopped by and decided to click in today. I want to ask you, can you imagine having a bill that is due for one billion dollars? Can you imagine having a debt that you owe to someone for one billion dollars? Just you, plain no individually you. I can imagine it for a country or I can imagine it for a big company maybe. But for an individual to have a bill of a billion dollars, and yet that's exactly the focus of our topic today. Our topic today begins with a guy who had a bill that was due to the king of one billion dollars. It says he owed him 10,000 talents. Yikes. That happens to be equal to a billion dollars. The topic for today, my friend, is the power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness and we read about the power of forgiveness in this story in Matthew chapter 18 if you want to open your Bibles and turn there it's in verses 21 to 35 and it gives us this account where it says Peter begins by asking Jesus hey Jesus um how often should I forgive someone when they've offended me seven times you see Peter was thinking, I'm awake eight, ten hours of the day, maybe one time an hour. That'd be seven times a day enough, Jesus? And Jesus answered him and he says, oh, no, no, no. He answers him in verse 22 and 23. And he says, no, Peter, not seven times, but 77 times is the lesson of forgiveness in my kingdom. 77 times a day. And let me tell you a story to illustrate it, Peter. And then he went on to give this parable. And he says, you know what? There was this king, Pete. And this king called one of his servants to him and said, Owe me. You owe me $1 billion. You owe me 10,000 talents. I want you to pay up. And the servant said, Are you kidding me? I can't pay. I, I can't pay you that 10 times. I can't pay you that 10,000 talents. I can't pay you back. I can't. Please be patient with me. I'll pay it back. Please be patient. I'll pay it back. And the king said, nope, if you can't pay it back, I'm going to take your family hostage. I'm going to take all of your loved ones hostage and you're going to be taken hostage. I want the payment back. And the servant pleaded and pleaded and pleaded, please, 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 please. Then it tells us that the king was merciful and the king had compassion and could hear the pleading of that man. And the king released that man from the debt of $1 billion. He said, okay, I will have mercy and I will forgive you of your debt and I will release you of that, what you owed to me. And of course the servant was ecstatic and he went off and who knows what he was thinking. He was forgiven of a debt of a billion dollars. Well, Jesus went on to tell the story and he tells the story. He says, yeah, and then that servant, he turned and he looked for all the guys that owed him money and he picked, singled one out. He picked one out. He said, pay me back what you owe me. Pay it back. And the servant plead, I can't pay it back. I can't, I, don't, I can't do it right now. I just don't have it. I can't pay it back. And that man who had, had been forgiven his debt said to the begging one, nope, I'm going to throw you in jail until you can pay me back. And when all these other guys observed what the forgiven man had done, they went to the king and they told the king, king, the guy you forgave just busted someone who owed him money. And the king came back. Jesus is telling the story. The king came and said to that forgiven servant, you should have forgiven him the same way I forgave you. You should have been merciful the same way I was merciful. You should have released him the same way I released you. And now I'm going to take you and throw you in jail. And Jesus said, hey, look at Peter, if you don't forgive others the way I've forgiven you, you're going to be taken and thrown in jail. And the same is the moral for you and for me and for everyone else on the planet. The moral is if we don't release forgiveness the same way that we've received forgiveness, the same way we received mercy, the same way we've received it, then we will too be put in jail. Crazy, right? Crazy. 
And I don't mean in jail at the county jail or the city jail. We're talking about a spiritual jail. In this text that Jesus and Peter have, this dialogue here, there's some truths, and I'd like to just point them out. Number one, in God's kingdom, um, the attitude of forgiveness is limitless. There's no numbers. It's without limit. God expects us to forgive as many times as necessary. Whenever we're offended, whenever someone's erred against us, we are expected to forgive them because that's the attitude of the kingdom, to walk in forgiveness, to release them, to release on earth, to release on heaven the same way that we've been released. That's our job, is to forgive. They won't ever be able to pay us back. And most of the times we're not talking about money, are we? We're talking about some sort of hurt feelings or some sort of physical something or something that they can't, they can't pay it back. There's no way that they can pay it back. But our job as we've been forgiven is to cancel their debt to us, to let it go, to let it die, to release it and thereby release them. You see, the second point is we owed an unpayable debt that our king has forgiven. And the same way he offered grace and mercy and forgiveness to us and released our family from that, that iniquity, so too we can turn and offer it. The king's wiped out our debt. We should turn and wipe out others' debts. And sometimes, though, the forgiveness doesn't begin with us. Sometimes we find it hard to forgive ourselves, don't we? We, we kind of carry around our own shame and we carry around our own uh, resentment. And God wants, the King wants us to release ourselves of that so we don't go and demand payment from others. We haven't received His mercy, let it saturate our heart so we don't offer mercy. And so we become angry and we become resentment and we punish others instead of offering them the forgiveness that God's been offered to us. You see, the worst offense that's been done to us still deserves them to be released and thereby releasing us. Um, the power of forgiveness is so great. Um, it's really for us. It's not for them. It's for us. It frees us. And I want to just wind up by giving you a few points that psychology and the medical field tells us about the power of forgiveness. Because Jesus told this story to Peter, and we can live by it and, and learn to walk in the forgiveness attitude of the kingdom. And yet, it's supported, my friend. Forgiveness is supported for mental health and our own well-being by the medical field and by psychology. So let me just tick off a few of these. When we forgive others, it's a decision that we are making to let go of resentment. You see, resentment is that thing that grips and hangs around and we just won't let go of that offending act. I'm telling you, to let go of resentment doesn't necessarily mean forgetting what happened or excusing what happened. It's not that at all. It's just being able to release it so we can have peace. Because until we can release it, we will not have peace. Forgiveness is the letting go of the grudges and the bitterness. Letting it go. Because the wounds that we hang on to cause anger and cause bitterness. And so whenever we hear that person's name or we reflect upon that certain event, anger and bitterness wells up in us. And we know anger and bitterness releases these um, hormones in our body and causes us to be stressed out. So it's this stupid cycle we get caught in if we don't learn to release forgiveness. Forgiveness also doesn't guarantee reconciliation. There's no guarantees. When you let something go, you truly let it go without even knowing what the ramifications or the end result will be. Forgiving yourself is vile. You 
got to forgive yourself. You see, if God's forgiven you, which he has if you've asked him to, then who are you to hold yourself to a higher standard than God has? If he's forgiven you, you are free. You've been released. Then don't hang on to your shame and your pride. Let it go. And let peace fill you up. Accept his mercy. Accept his release. Accept his pride and let uh, his love and let go of your pride. See, when we are able to do that, it releases an empathy that we then gain in our hearts towards that one that hurt us. It leads to empathy. Doesn't excuse them, but it leads to a better understanding. And it also... Um, forgiveness kind of allows the relationship to be the very best that it can be. Doesn't mean maybe it's going to be perfect, but it means it's going to be the best it can be because we've let go. We don't have anything that's kind of hanging around in us, in our heart towards that person. I'm telling you, I think most of us have discovered that most of Satan's tricks with us and most of his... Um, his games with us and, and the gains that he has in our life are due to unforgiveness. But don't get discouraged because forgiveness is a, it's a long process. It's a long distance run. It takes time to walk in forgiveness and to feel that wound not be sensitive to the touch, right? And finally, we know, oh, yeah, I have a bruise there, or I had a broken bone there, or I had a something, but it's been healed. And that's what he does. He heals us. It doesn't mean that that person won't have consequences, but it just means we don't have to be the one to execute, <laughs> to pay back. It's not on us. We trust the Lord to take care of that. When we walk in forgiveness, there's a saturation of joy and peace and happiness that comes. That can only come through forgiveness. And so I would just challenge you, my friend. We all need work in the area of forgiveness. All of us are on a road. But in order for us to walk in a relationship that's pleasing to the Lord, we have to live the life of an attitude of forgiveness releasing others let them go just simply let them go that will bring him pleasure and it will bring us wholeness amen there's more on the notes i'm not going to go into it more i just know forgiveness is a big thing and i know that you want to please the lord so there you go have a great week be blessed see you next time